significant figures. That's what this first lesson in a chapter on measurements is going to be about here in my high school chemistry playlist. Uh, we'll follow it up with a lesson on scientific notation, another lesson on accuracy and precision, and then a lengthy lesson on units and conversions. Now again, these are in my high school chemistry playlist. This is brand new. I'll be releasing these weekly throughout the 2020-2021 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel and be sure to click the bell notification so that you're notified when I release them. All right, so significant figures. So uh, for those that aren't familiar, so oftentimes figuring out the number of significant figures is what we term them in a number is a little bit challenging. It all comes down to the pesky zeros. And sometimes zeros are significant and sometimes they're not. And we've got four rules and we're gonna go through those four rules with four different examples. But before we get there, we gotta talk about why even talk about significant figures. So let's just say that uh, Bob lives right here. So, and Bob has an ant up in Canada. So, and this ant lives right here. Cool, and I asked Bob, hey Bob, how far away does your ant live? And Bob's like, yeah, she lives about 3,000 miles away. Okay, about 3,000 miles away. All right, so Bob's also got an uncle, and that uncle lives another little bit further, right in line directly beyond his aunt. So just a little bit further. How much further? Well, I'm gonna ask Bob's aunt. Hey, Bob's aunt, how much further does Bob's uncle live? She's like, I Googled it. And it is 43.216 miles. Cool, so then I go back to Bob and I say, hey Bob, based on how far you think it is to your aunt's house and how far it is from her house right on the other side to your uncle's house, how far is it to your uncle's house? And Bob's like, it is exactly 3,043.216 miles. <laughs> exactly. And we're like, wait a minute, huh. Let's look at this, because if we look, we know that from Bob to Bob's aunt is around 3,000 miles. We don't know if that it's exactly 3,000 miles according to Google or anything. It's just about 3,000 miles. We wouldn't be surprised, you know, if we Googled it to find out like it's like 2,763 miles or 3,127 miles or, you know, something. It's about 3,000 miles. So the big thing here is some of these numbers in the 3,000 are not significant because we don't actually know this number that well. Now this number, we know it really well. In fact, we know it all the way to the, within a thousandth of a mile really well, according to Google, Google Earth or something like that. So, but the key is if I'm gonna add these two numbers together, you can only know the result as well as you know the least accurate of those two numbers or the least specific of those two numbers. And that's this one. So there's no way I know the distance from Bob to his uncle's house this accurately all the way down to within a thousandth of a mile. That's just not possible because one of the inputs going into that calculation, we didn't know it that well to begin with. So that, that's kind of a big deal. This becomes a big deal for engineers when they're building buildings and bridges and things of this sort. How well, you know, do you really know all the different uh, numbers and calculations that go into preparing those buildings and stuff. So kind of a big deal. If you don't know your numbers that well, you might build a bridge that might not stand up to a semi going across it or something like that on accident. So this ends up being a, a fairly significant thing. We talk about sig figs here, uh, what we call them for short. So let's talk about these rules now. And we've got four rules and it all comes down to the zeros. You'll find out that every digit that's not a zero, like a five or a four, or a four or seven, a two, a five, a four, a two, a one, a six, those are always significant. It all comes down to the zeros though. Sometimes zeros are significant and sometimes they're not. And there are four rules that can help you memorize when they are and when they aren't. So first off, if a number starts with zeros, so, and that's gonna be in rule number one. If a number starts with zeros, none of those zeros are gonna be significant. So not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, they're not significant at all. And so overall, we'd say that this number right here has two significant figures, two sig figs for short, we say. So that's the first rule. Zeros that begin a number are never significant. Now I'm gonna skip right down here to rule number four for a second. So rule number four deals with zeros that are surrounded by significant numbers. So like these two zeros are in between significant figures. Those zeros are always going to be significant. So these two totally are. And so in this case, the two, the one, and the six are definitely significant, but so are the two zeros in between. And so we'd say that this number total has five sig figs. <clears throat> okay. 
So zeros at the beginning of a number, never significant. Zeros in the middle of a number, always significant. The tricky part comes for zeros at the end of a number. So in zeros at the end of a number, sometimes they're significant and sometimes they're not. It really depends on which side of the decimal they fall. Now, if you end a number in zeros and those zeros are to the left-hand side of the decimal as they are here, and this is gonna be rule number two, then they are not significant. And so in this case, the five and the four are definitely significant, but these two zeros are not. And so overall, we'd say that this whole number, 5,400, has two sig figs. We only actually know it, give or take, within 100 miles. So, so it's significant to the hundreds place, if you will. So not to the tens, not to the ones, only significant to the hundreds place. So we know it within 100 miles or so. All right, now, if you end a number in zeros that are to the right-hand side of the decimal, though, those are totally going to be significant. And so in this case, these two zeros, well, the last one we end with, so that's significant. And then this one is in between significant figures, since we now know that this one's significant, so he's also significant. And so all the numbers in this one are significant, the two, the five, the four, and both zeros, for a grand total, once again, of five sig figs. Now, if you look at this, we got the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place, the ten thousandths place. And so we'd say we know this number specifically to the ten thousandths place. So pretty well we know this lovely 2.5400 number. Cool, so those are our rules for zeros. And once again, in summary, zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. Zeros in the middle of a number are always significant. And then zeros at the end of the number are sometimes significant. If they're to the right of the decimal, they are. And if they're to the left of the decimal, they are not. Now, let's just pretend, you know, we are measuring the distance, you know, from my house to my grandma's house or something like that. And, and it came out to exactly 5,400 miles, like exactly, so within a mile. Well, this would look like, you know, the normal way we'd write it as 5400. It would only look like it's accurate to the hundreds place. If I said 5401, well, then I'd know it was accurate all the way to the ones place. But here, Google, like I looked and it was exactly 5400. So how do I actually say that? So if you're trying to end a number with a zero here, and it is accurate all the way down to the ones place, sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually write in that decimal that we normally wouldn't write in. And so by writing in that decimal, that clues us in that the zero that comes right before it is totally significant. So this zero now is significant with the way we've written that decimal right there. So, and then the five and the four were definitely significant. And because this zero is in between significant figures, that makes it significant. And now all of a sudden this would have four sig figs. Cool, and we'll find out that, you know, sometimes this gets to be a little bit of a pain in the butt with these zeros left of the decimal and when they're significant, when they're not and stuff like this. And, and sometimes, it's just you're better off using what's called scientific notation. Unfortunately, that's in the next lesson, but I will reference right back to this point uh, when we get there. But suffice to say, we now know the rules for zeros. So we'll finish off this lesson talking about two different sets of mathematical operations and the rules for sig figs when you're performing those operations. And one rule is for multiplication and division, but another rule is for addition and subtraction, and you've got to treat them differently. Now, it turns out in chemistry, we will end up using multiplication and division way more commonly. So, and as a result, students often only remember the rule for multiplication and division. So, but the one for addition and subtraction does show up every once in a while. So, you just want to make sure you remember that one, there are different rules for the two, and that you look at which mathematical math mathematical operation you're doing before you apply the set of rules. Now, multiplication division, again, is the one we will use more commonly. And essentially, when you do a, just a big string of multiplying and dividing, all you do is calculate out your answer, use your calculator to do it, and then your answer is going to have the same number of sig figs as whichever one of your individual numbers has the lowest number of sig figs. So if we look at our numbers here, so this first one's got the two, the four, and ending with a zero right of the decimal, that zero is also significant. And so it has a total of three sig figs. This one, this zero is in between significant figures, so it's significant, and one, two, also three sig figs. So, but this term ends with a zero, but it's left at the decimal, that zero is not significant. And so the three and the one are, but the zero is not, so it only has two sig figs. And so what this tells us then is that our answer is only gonna be allowed to have two significant figures, the same as whichever one of our numbers has the lowest number of sig figs. And so in this case, we'll bust out our calculator. And this is as good a time as any to say that uh, it might be worth your time to invest in a good calculator. I recommend a good TI calculator. So uh, people use them a lot. And there's lots of tutorials on YouTube for how to do different things with them. So super handy uh, in this class, your math classes, in college, so on and so forth. Uh, so we'll do 2.40. 
times 1.09 times 310. So and in my calculator, it says 810.96. Okay, now what that tells us though, is again, that's the number before we have to round it to where it only has two sig figs. So if you look with two sig figs, the hundreds place definitely is going to be significant. And the tens place is definitely going to be significant. So and then we're gonna have to round it from there. And in this case, our one, the last significant figure we're supposed to have, is going to stay a one. It's not going to round up because the number coming right after it is a zero. Five and up, you'd round it up. Four and below, you keep it what it is. And so in this case, this is going to round to 810. And that would be the proper calculation expressed with the proper number of sig figs. Cool. So let's take a look at addition and subtraction. And this is going to be a little bit different. And so if you look, you might be like, well, Chad, that zero right there is in between uh, other sig figs. What's sig fig? That's got five. This one's got two. And this one ends with a zero to the left of the decimal. It's not sig fig. It's got three. And so maybe my answer is only supposed to have two sig figs. And that's not how it works with addition and subtraction. And again, we're not going to use this very often in chemistry in your, in your class, it turns out. Uh, if you're an engineer, you'd probably use it all the time and probably use this all the time too. But in chemistry, we just don't encounter this as, as often in our calculations. So students often forget the rule for this. And the rule for this doesn't deal with the, the number of sig figs in the lowest, you know, the, the number with least sig figs like it did over here with multiplication division. Uh, it deals with the least specific decimal place, if you will. So it uh, might help if we actually wrote this a little different. So we're going to write 104.17, and I'm going to line these up 36, and then 47 and uh, 4720 there. So if you look, that first number is specific all the way to the hundredths place, all the way to the hundredths place. The next number is specific all the way to the ones place. And the final number is specific all the way to the tens place. And so the first number is by far the most specific, all the way to the hundredths. So we know what that number is, give or take a hundredth. So this next number we know specifically all the way to the ones place. So we know what it is, give or take, you know, plus or minus one, if you will. But the last number we only know to the tens place. So it's like plus or minus 10. It's the least specific of our numbers as a result. And so as a result, our final answer, we're going to have to round it to the tens place. So let's again, trust our handy dandy calculator here. And we'll do 104.17 plus 36 plus 47.20. And we'll get 4860.17. We'll just set that on the ground. We're done with it. So 4860.17. But again, we're going to have to round it to the tens place. And so in this case, the number that immediately follows it is less than five. So we'll keep it a six. And this is just going to round to 4860. And that is our answer expressed in the proper number of sig figs. Cool. So one quick word of the wise. So when are sig figs important? Well, always and not always. <laughs> so that's a little confusing, but sig figs are always important, you know, on lab reports, on exams, when you're being tested on this stuff. But most of you guys are probably going to take at least some portion of your tests as uh, multiple choice exams. And uh, oftentimes when we test students on significant figures specifically, we'll write a multiple choice question in just such a way that you've got multiple answers that look very similar, but only one of them has the correct number of sig figs. So, but oftentimes in the whole rest of your chemistry course, so when you get a question, oftentimes the difference in the answers is not going to be about a difference in sig figs. It'll actually be different numerical calculations and stuff. So you're not going to get tested on this too heavy, except in this, uh, usually this first section. Uh, of your course uh, and maybe on the final exam. So, but on lab reports and things like this, you should definitely uh, make a huge point of always expressing any kind of calculations in the proper number of sig figs. Cool, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. So, and quick word to the wise, you might check out my premium course on chadsprep.com if you're looking for practice materials to go along with this or with the study guides that go with it that have all the rules lined up and stuff like that. And once again, by all means, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment if you've got a question, uh, and click that bell if you want to be notified when I release more of these throughout the school year. Happy studying.